All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Mr. Flatface, the man on many faces and even more opinions. And I always have an opinion when it comes to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 2022 edition. First off, I want to thank you guys all for the likes, the comments, the subscriptions. You guys are amazing. And especially to anyone who's been offering audio advice. Audio is probably one of my biggest pet peeves and one of my biggest insecurities when it comes to uploading these videos. What I hear in my headset and after doing my mixing is very different often than what I put onto YouTube. It's it, I don't know what happens maybe in the compression or whatever, but what you guys hear and what I I hear are two very different things. There's times I've added sound effects or background noises or music, and for some reason in my headset, they're super loud, but on the TV, they're, they're non-existent, or even on the cell phone. So I appreciate anybody who's been offering some audio advice. That is absolutely crucial. I need some help. I use a pod mic with a Go XLR. I'm trying to find YouTube videos that make it better. And I use Audacity to record my audio for in-game narration. Just to give you an idea of what I use, that's what I use. So if you guys have any tips and tricks for that, let me know. What you guys are seeing on screen is going to be a short compilation of me joining into games late. It's about three games in total, and it's just me joining into the games extremely late or around the midpoint. One of them's in the midpoint, but none of them do we do any better than we should. What I mean by that is when you join a game late, it's immediately going to be an uphill battle. You're already fighting your way to the top. There is so much that happens in that opening crucial minute of a COD match. That opening start from when you drop out of your helicopter or pull up in your vehicle. When both teams get out and they wait on either side and the map counts down. There's a lot that happens as soon as it hits zero. The second that it starts the match, so much has to happen. Immediately upon the match starting, you're going to have both teams try to figure out each other. One team may be rushers, one team may be campers, one team may be snipers, one team may be riot shield users. In that opening minute, the teams are going to rush to specific points in the map where they individually as a player feel comfortable. This is crucial because if you get to your spot and you get set up, all of a sudden you're going to change the following minutes to come. If I'm a sniper and I can get to my spot, I can set up my claymores to peck me from behind and I can set up into my window or my bush or whatever, and I can lay down my covering fire across the entire one side of the map, all while not being obstructed by the enemy team getting there, it's going to change the tide of the battle for the next few minutes. And the same goes for a rusher. If a rusher can get through his flank path, then he's going to be behind the enemy and he's going to change the tide of battle. This all happens in that opening minute where nobody's set up yet. Everyone's trying to get to where they want to be to try to win the game. Pretty much after that opening minute, you're going to know whether or not you're going to win or lose. Obviously, there's going to be some, you know, extenuating circumstances that are going to change that for you depending on individual player skill levels maybe somebody pops off kind of thing but for the most part after that first minute you're going to kind of know where everybody's at the campers are going to camp because they got to their camping location and they're going to hold it down for the rest of the game in that first minute you're going to know who's rushing and who's going to be trying to flank you the whole time and what routes they're going to be using you're also going to know if there's going to be riot shield users and you know shield deployers that are going to sit inside very small confined areas in that first minute you're going to know more about your enemy team than you will ever learn in the next nine to ten let's say so if you miss a game's first minute you're going to come into that game completely lost scared and afraid you're going to spawn in the middle of the map surrounded by enemies you're going to have teammates somewhere but you don't know where and there's going to be a whole lot going on that you got to try to figure out. Your minute one is now midway through the game and you got to try to figure out all this stuff while they're already established, set up and the streaks are happening. The issue with this is that it's incredibly hard for a player who's thrown into a match halfway through to make any difference in the tide of the battle. The team that's winning is most likely going to be the team that wins the game. Why? Because people don't leave a game when they're freaking doing good. I have joined the odd game where I am on a team that is doing good and winning. And usually that's because somebody DC'd and I have to fill their shoes. But the end result to joining a team that is winning and a team that is losing is almost none. As you can see in the gameplays that are gonna be on this video, I do win some, but I don't do good, and I lose some, and I don't do good. This is simply because I can't have to join a match and you have to try to figure out everything that's going on. You have to figure out where your team is. What's their play style? Are they campers? Are they rushers? Are they snipers? Does this guy need covering? Is that guy providing support? Is there a kill streak in the air? Is that my UAV? I don't know. I missed the call out. And then at the same time, you got to figure out where the enemy is. Are they campers? Are they snipers? Is that their UAV? I don't know. I wasn't here for the call out. And then you have to try to figure out how to move around the map while not intruding into anybody else's space. What I mean by that is you don't want to intrude into your teammate's space. Maybe he's been locking down that one side of the map for the entire game and he's popping off over there and that's his UAV. Or you're trying to break into a team that has already set up their camping spots and now you're the enemy trying to get in there and you can't get in there because you didn't even know they were in there and that's their UAV. <laughs> you guys get it? I don't know what's going on. So often when you join the game, you spend your first two minutes wandering around like a toddler 
learning to walk for the first time. You sit there trying to struggle to figure out who's saying what, what's going on, and who's who. Then you top that in with court score streaks like the VTOL at the beginning of the match and the, the support helo or UAVs, and you kind of start to feel a little bit like you have no idea what's happening. To put it plainly, Activision, Call of Duty devs, whoever the hell made this decision, no one wants to join a game that's half over. And if a game is half over, don't put people into the game. Especially when you took out this loss does not count because you joined late statistic thing. Not that win-loss ratio matters, but nobody wants to feel like that they got cheated. I don't want to join a game, take an L because I joined within the last minute and a half, and now I have an L on my record, but I didn't do anything in that game. Who knows? Maybe the other team was just constantly feeding. Maybe they were cheating. I don't know, but I got an L on my name, and I didn't even know what the hell happened here. People leave games Activision and Call of Duty because they're not fun. A variety of reasons can be that, but 90% of the time it's because they're losing, right? People have left because of quick scopers and campers, or even just simply the servers are crap which you know and i know call of duty that the servers are crap they leave the game because it's not enjoyable now why would you think because person a left a game because they were not having fun that i would rather fill their shoes and try to you know make it fun for myself i've yet to join a game where i have had fun joining midway through it is very 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 rare that i join a game and i'm like this is great and i don't mean fun isn't doing good when i join a game late immediately all expectations of how my lobby's gonna go are <laughs> they're right out the window i have no longer cared about any of it there is zero point in getting upset at a statistic and a KD and a bunch of stuff that is outside of my realm of control. So when I join a game that's late, I try to just joke around with the other team. I try to joke around my team. I try to get my content, my own content to digest out of just simply interacting with the people within that lobby. Sometimes I ask, hey, why, why did the other guy leave? Oh, he disconnected because these servers are trash. He got tired of being killed by the riot shield user. He kept getting quick scoped and he got pissed off. And I get to learn a little bit about the person that left. And I get to learn why they left and see if maybe my experience is the same. Or sometimes we just crack jokes or I join into a funny conversation. The problem with joining into a game late though is you can't build a rapport with your team. You can't build a rapport with the play styles and you can't build a rapport with the way the match is going to play out. It's often going to be dictated how it's going to go has already been decided. And if I'm joining the game in the last minutes, the final minutes, it's probably because I'm losing and somebody just didn't want to sit there and wait for the end. I have no idea when this decided to be a feature. I understand you don't want your lobbies to be empty, but sometimes a lobby does need to be emptied. If somebody is cheating on the other team and the lobby empties out because of that, don't fill it with a bunch of people who now have to experience it again. Leave it empty. Let that hacker sit there by himself. If somebody pops off and is doing really good, don't fill the lobby. He already won. He did what he needed to do. All you're doing by filling it every time that a bunch of people rage quit is just giving more people to, for him to kill and cannon fodder. I know that might seem selfish, but uh, nobody wants to join a game and get shit on by a guy who's just been popping off the whole time. I can't stop him from popping off because I joined the game late. I have no opportunity to even switch the outcome of what's happening here. If he's got a veto, he's got a veto. I just have to own it. I just have to accept the fact I'm going to die over and over again. Joining a game late should never have been a, a feature. Just let the lobbies die out. Just let them fizzle out. And you can't even say that it's all the time because I've played search and destroy matches where there's three versus six. I've had it where it's my team and I've had it where it's their team. I played TDMs where for some reason you never fill that sixth spot. Every once in a while you decide to turn on that switch that says, hey, we're going to throw people into these absolutely disgusting lobbies and see what happens. I feel like you stir the pot sometimes, Call of Duty Activision. I, sometimes I feel like you just stir it to see what kind of controversy you can drive up. This was three gameplays of me joining into games late. And, it, and, and at no point does my outcome change. I'm getting shit on the whole time. Did I have fun in some? Yeah, the people were great. And that's what I'm here for, the, the, the community content. But as far as actual gameplay goes, no, I didn't do very good. You can see I got absolutely crapped on. I did my best. I, d I just couldn't compete. You can't compete if you miss out on that opening minute. Think of it like Rainbow Six Siege. When you are doing your prep time, that is crucial. But that opening few seconds after is insanely crucial because you have that time to try to divert your attention away from what you actually want the enemy to do once they can no longer look at the cameras that's when you move so think of that crucial opening section from rainbow six as the opening section from any call of duty match any game mode any type the opening minute or so is so crucial to the overall feel of the rest of the game if i'm going to be a rusher i'm going to want to get down the flank that i want and get as far in there as i can to try to hold the enemy back immediately and if I'm a sniper, I'm going to want to get to my sniper's nest and try to hold the enemy back there. If I can't do that in the opening minute, then I'm not going to be able to do it for the rest of the game without a very strong uphill battle. I hope I got my point across on why joining games are late. Sometimes what's in my brain comes out a lot more jumbled than I intend, but that's just part of my disability. My brain speaks faster than I do.
I've been your host, Mr. Flatface, the man of many faces and even more opinions, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. And please like, comment, and consider subscribing if you want. You guys are killing it as it is. We're growing daily, and that's amazing. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.